Hey folks, welcome back to Jim Cloud's continuing video tutorial series. I'm Greg Keller, I'm the company's Chief Product Officer, and today we'll be talking to you about our system policies implementation. First, let's give you a little quick primer on policies, then we're going to use this marker and use our whiteboard to demonstrate kind of how this concept works. Policies are, in our world, in the world of JumpCloud, the ability for a sysadmin or an operator, an administrator of JumpCloud to point and click their way into configuring the behavior of machines no matter where they live. And this goes across Windows, Mac, and Linux systems. And sort of legacy systems, you may have heard these as group-based policy objects. Um, this is an analog to that, but again, a cross-system or cross-platform implementation uh, of a very similar kind of concept. Um, so let's use this pen. Let's kind of draw our boxes like we've done in our, our prior uh, whiteboard videos, and we're going to demonstrate to you how this kind of works. So let's get started. First, uh, let's utilize Jump Cloud. Uh, from our cloud-based platform here in this box. So we'll entitle this as Jump Cloud. Just assume that this is the cloud-based infrastructure and more or less the administrative kind of view into policies. Uh, out here in the world, we're going to draw an endpoint. All right? And again, this could be a Windows, a Linux, or a Mac OS uh, endpoint. So it's fully cross-platform. Uh, but we'll just use a generic symbol of a system just so you have the idea what this is. Now, uh, furthermore, assume that this uh, endpoint does have the Jump Cloud agent on it, so the JC agent. Uh, this is the client code that you will install or mass distribute to the endpoints that will be under governance by Jump Cloud, uh, which, as you already know from prior video tutorials, manages user account access, event management, multi-factor authentication, uh, command execution, which we'll speak a little bit about here in a moment, uh, and of course now, policies. So let's go through the architecture first, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the behavior and how all this stuff works. All right, so first, inside the Jump Cloud platform, um, we have the concept of a system group, all right? So we'll call this guy sys group. This is an arbitrary object. It's a collection of other systems that you'll add. So inside the system group, you could con conceptually make a, a group called uh, all uh, Mac systems or all uh, sales person systems. It doesn't matter. Then you can have a package or a bundle of Windows and let's say some Mac systems. It can be completely, completely cross OS as well. In this very simple model, well, inside the system group, we will create uh, one system. We'll call the system A. All right. Out here in the real world, the actual system itself, this is also system A. All right. So now you have the system group created inside of Jump Cloud. Let's expand this a little bit. Give ourselves some more room. You will create policies. So out of the box, Jump Cloud includes a library of templates. So we'll kind of articulate that as this. And just um, the sort of prefab policies uh, that you have to instantiate. So for example, you may have one for screen saver, right? And out of box, you'll see the Jump Cloud template for screen saver. There's, there's a few in there, and our library list is growing every day. Um, you will then create your own instantiation of screensaver out of the template library. And perhaps this is a screensaver that you will need set for your sales team or for the system group um, to trigger the screensaver at um, 90 seconds, some arbitrary number. So you configure the policy as you see fit, and then you bind that policy to the system group, a group-based policy. Right? What this means is that each system, and you could have many systems inside this system group, will receive that policy. We will communicate those instructions and land the policy on the endpoint. Just like any other normal operation, the agent rotates on a 60 second interval to again pick up user changes, password changes, and of course it will pick up 
uh, these policy changes. So policies are then distributed to the machine, uh, and there they live. Now, while on the, on the machine, um, let's assume that you have an administrator or even you know, a savvy user who wants to crawl in and make a, a, a modification to their screensaver. First, you should know that we actually can control the user interfaces of things like in the world of, of Windows, the control panel, to, to block your user from even modifying. You have control over that with our policies, meaning modifying the UI uh, and getting access to the UI for changing their screen save. The same thing applies for Mac OS with system preferences. So you have control over that as well. But assume that in some way the end user can make a modification um, and it will revert um, you know, the, the screen saver setting in our, in our example here to some other number like zero, right? They don't want a screen saver. The intelligence of our policy system on the agent will overwrite the, any of those changes within 90 seconds. So we will keep the policy resilient in this way. Another sort of interesting aspect of our policies, which is a little different from other vendors and other mechanisms of enforcing policy, uh, is the fact that there's no VPN that's required here. So in this particular world, just like our normal agent operation, the agent is calling back through mutual TLS, through a hyper-secure channel, outbound from the machine through port 443. So just using an open standard port, again, making outbound calls from uh, the endpoint, not inbound calls, which could be dangerous from a security standpoint, from the mothership. So policies are then received and communicated in exactly that way. No VPN is needed. You don't need to, you know, sign into the and this is an old school sort of term, into the domain in order to you know, receive new packages of, of uh, uh, policies or update settings or any of that. The agent is resilient and is manufacturing those changes, again, every 60 seconds on the endpoint. So now you kind of have an overlay of the land. So let's review. We give you a template or a series of templates in our policy library. You then create an instantiation of the desired uh, template into your own pattern. You apply that policy pattern to a system group or many system groups. And the machines that live within your system groups all get that set or you know, either a single policy or many policies uh, upon which the agent will be governing that. Again, no VPN required and is resilient, um, utilizing an every 60 second sort of true up to make sure your policies are set um, as you wish and as you need them for security reasons. So that's it. Please always, as normal, go to support.jumpcloud.com, use our search engine on our support and knowledge base to find out uh, anything else you need to know, including our other videos, detailed videos on how policies work uh, within the Jump Cloud console and how they are affected on Windows, Mac, and Linux endpoints. Thanks again for joining. We hope to see you back for another one of our whiteboard tutorial videos.